here's flat space time, and then we, we curve down to uh, the near the surface of a black hole, right? And then there's a you know, the event horizon like this, right? There's the pig. There's always a pig. Right? So, right, there we go. Here's the event horizon. Yeah, of course, you know, down here is like infinite curvature of space time, right, and all this stuff, right? But um, here's the event horizon. That stuff must be leaving from close to the event horizon, yes? This is gravitational potential. So as a photon leaves, and we see it at some distance, hasn't it climbed through a large gravitational potential? Doesn't that cost it some amount of energy? Yeah, yeah it's going to cost it some amount of energy. So what happens to a photon if it loses energy? If it started out blue, it's going to end up red. red. This is called gravitational redshift. So when we look at atoms, like perfectly good atoms, like hydrogen atoms near a quasar or near a black hole, right? Those hydrogen atoms are vibrating slower, right? We know that hydrogen atoms obey the laws of physics. They vibrate at a particular, we define a second in terms of like vibrations of a cesium atom or something, don't we? Right? We know that they're vibrating really in their frame of reference just as fast as they vibrate on Earth. But when we observe them at distance near the black hole, we see them vibrating slower. It's red shifted. It's a longer wavelength, lower frequency, right? Okay, so that's one way to explain it. You can also explain it with uh, relativity, right? So this is our first equation, right? High clocks run fast, low clocks run slow, okay? And here is our first, our next formula, right, uses this. And this formula comes right from this, this dry diagram here, right? What it is is, let me rewrite it a different way, an equivalent way. And this is a very approximate formula. There exists a better formula, but we're not going to use it. Right? And these two are different H's, right? This is height, this is Planck's constant, right? Okay. Yeah? So how should the GPS satellites correct small differences in time? Oh, I think it's really small. I think it's so small that, it, that it's not really a problem, right? Uh, that's my guess, but I don't know. Okay. So anyway, this is w if you look at this formula, isn't this the f this is the energy of a photon, right? This is the fraction of energy the photon has lost, isn't it? Right? Isn't this mgh from last year? Like mgh is in potential energy, and isn't mc squared the total energy of a mass object? Yeah. Right. So what we're saying is that photons lose a proportion of their energy that's proportional to the the change now. Remember that MGH doesn't work if you cross large distances, then you have to use a more powerful formula for it. And this one would be relativistic, and so it, this is just very approximate, right? Okay. But anyway, this is, and I think you've got this on your sheet, don't you? Yeah. This is the change in frequency, and then you have to use your smarts. If it's a low clock, it's going to be slower by that amount, less frequency. If it's a high clock, it'll be more frequency than that, more frequent, more faster, right? Okay. Um, this is the original frequency. And then this is the gravitational field strength. That's our change in height. And then, as you can see, <laughs> and by high and low, you mean the yeah, high and low as in relative to gravity, right? If you're if you're where something would fall if you dropped it, right? So think about this. I mean, we didn't. I sort of I sort of skipped over this very quickly. But remember, back you know a little while ago, I think we gave this example. We had two stopwatches. One I'm holding in my hand here. The other one I put on the end of a string, and I'm twirling it really fast, yes? And I spin it faster and faster, and I get it going nine-tenths the speed of light, right? Holy crap, right? This teacher really has no regard for safety, right? And then I have the ability to read a stopwatch going around in small circles at nine-tenths the speed of light, don't I? Yeah. Now think about this. Don't we see, due to special relativity, that clock running slower because it's going nine-tenths the speed of light relative to me at any given instant tangentially, yes? Don't we? But then we've got this semi-paradoxical thing where I could just stop that stopwatch, grab it, pull it together, and like, oh, this was the moving one, this was the one that didn't move. Because as soon as I pull it out of that frame of reference, it's still behind, right? But think about that frame of reference. Think about that frame of reference. Isn't it accelerating? Yeah, going in a circle is accelerating. Isn't it experiencing g-forces? And in fact, from my frame of reference, isn't the outside of the circle down? If you're in that frame of reference, down is out, is out isn't it? Because that's the way you feel the g-force, right? So it is a low clock. That spinning clock is a low clock. So it all works together, doesn't it? Special relativity and general relativity do a certain amount of this, right? So. Say which? Oh, it's a low clock because if you think about it, it's getting flung to the outside. 
So the g-force is outward, oh, right? Okay. So it's like a low clock, right? If you're in the centrifuge, the outside is down, right? It's like people are putting that through their brain. It's like, it's like one of those jokes that's hard to get, right? Is that, is acceleration that opposite because acceleration well, remember, if I accelerate that way, the g-force I feel is this way. It's always that way, right? right. Yeah. So yeah, no, yeah. So put that one in your notes. And this is funny. So to the answer to your question, what, how much do we have to compensate on Earth? Let's look at this, right? And the, the funny thing was that they put a problem not unlike this on paper three, which you now, I believe, after today, you'd be able to do like that whole thing except for the Big Bang stuff. Okay? Um, they put an example like this, and I just thought it was ridiculous. They, honest to God, give the, f the um, frequency as not 93.4 megahertz, but they give it as, as like 93, you know, uh, uh, 0.4, or 93, comma, 400, comma, 000, period, hertz. Like they have all those sig figs. And then they have you calculate a, a frequency shift, and then they... Um, they actually have you subtract that from the original one or something like that. I'm like, really? Yeah, that's what they wanted you to do, right? So we'll look at that when we look at the, the test. But let's go ahead and plug it into our, our new formula here. They're being careful not to erase the pig. Okay. He erased the pig. Okay. So our delta F is what we're trying to find. The frequency is really, I'm going to just keep it in megahertz. We can do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go E to the... 6 hertz, or I'll just say megahertz. Because right, I, I think the answer I give is that, right? And then it's uh, 9.81 is our feeble gravitational field strength. Right? And then the height is 320 meters. Right? And then it's 3E8 meters per second squared. Right? And then a Newton is, this is meters, I'm going to keep it meters per second squared. And then if you look at this, these units are meters squared per second squared. These are meters squared per second squared. So this is a pure ratio. This is also a hertz to hertz ratio. And this is going to be a very small amount, isn't it? 9.81 times 320 divided by 3E8 squared times... Yeah, so it is... I get 3. Uh, 3.3 times 10 to the minus 12th megahertz, but that's not fair. It's really 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6th hertz. Shift, is that a very big shift? Because mega is million, so a million 10 to the minus picos is a micro. Huh? Put that one, put that in your smipe and poke it. Yeah. I said put that in your smipe and poke it. <laughs> Between like the text message you were finishing and you know, I'm teasing. Oh! Whoa! Okay. Now, theoretically, theoretically, the question says that the radio station, for some reason you know, unknown to us, is at the bottom of this tower. We're at the top. So all we've found is the amount that it's going to be less, isn't it? Because low clocks run slow, correct? Okay, so actually we tune to a lower frequency, only not really very much lower, correct? Not really very much lower. So it'd be lower, but not very much, okay? So let's try this one. You guys try that one yourself. Unless, is it in the paper? I don't think it is, right? A radio station at the bottom of, let's get a little closer to a neutron star where gravitational field is uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 13th meters per second squared. So do the same calculation, only change this to 2.5 E13. So it'll always give us the D value? Yeah, sure, or, or, or maybe that's what you calculate, right? Calculate that. Calculate that. Okay, keep it in megahertz, and the question is, what's the change in frequency from the bottom to the top? So find your delta F again, right? And then the question is, the next question is, what frequency do they tune to at the top? If they're at the top, they have to tune to a higher frequency or a lower frequency? At the top, higher. Well, if they're at the top and we're observing them, low clocks run slow and the radio station's at the bottom of the tower. 